morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 27 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system it's a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis and while some folks may call that healing regenerating renewing system a miracle it really is no miracle at all it is simply the way the body works if you have Uh, questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we need you to hold those questions because we got a guest for the whole hour today. We're going to be talking to Dr. or to Jonathan Baylor, who is a computer programmer and a lifestyle coach and a personal trainer and the author of a wonderful new book called The Calorie Myth, as well as another book, which I read uh, about a year and a half ago, called The Smarter Science of Slim. We got Jonathan on for the whole hour, and he's going to be talking about the mythology of calorie counting. Very excited about that. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear us talk about or advertise in the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, take a look at our shopping cart, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. I want to remind you guys in the Bay Area, I'll be doing a talk in Santa Cruz, California, at the Vintage Faith Church on March the 7th. Friday night, March the 7th, 6.30 p.m. Hope to see you all out there. And I also want to remind you to check out my blog, PharmacistBen.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to my webmaster, Robert Lundgren. All right. I am very excited to have our next guest on. We got him on for the whole hour. He's the author of a couple of books, uh, Smarter Science of Slim, The Calorie Myth. He is a computer programmer and uh, has registered more than 25 Patents serves as a computer, as a senior program manager for Microsoft. He also runs a wellness consulting business. He's from Washington and is the author of a great new book called The Calorie Myth. Welcome to the Bright Side, Jonathan Baylor. How are you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for having me, Ben. It's awesome to be on your show. And it's good to have you. I'm so excited because we talk, as I said to you before we went on the air, we talk about the calorie myth all the time. And I'm really excited to have you share your take on it. You certainly don't mean that calories are mythological, but what is that? what exactly is the calorie myth? You're spot on. It, it, this is not one of those books that says that calories don't count. Calories certainly count. The calorie myth is that you need to count them. Mm. What I mean by that is... Prior to the obesity epidemic, nobody knew what a calorie was, let alone count them, and we didn't have an obesity epidemic. So common sense seems to dictate that the solution to the obesity epidemic isn't more precise metabolic math. Maybe we should look back and see what we did before we had this problem and do that instead. So where did this thing come from? Where did the idea that calories and and weight and losing calories means losing weight and all you got to do to lose weight is drop your calories, which everybody knows isn't true. These people lose calories, people restrict their calories all the time and don't lose weight. That's one of the most common complaints that I get. Probably you hear all the time. I'm eating less food and I'm not losing weight. Where did this whole idea come from? It's very, it's extremely intuitive. I like to think of the calorie myth or this idea that if you just eat less, you will sustainably lose weight as being analogous to the flat earth theory. Because if you look out your window and if your listeners look out their window, it really looks like the earth is flat. It's Mm. very intuitive that the earth is flat. And if it wasn't flat, wouldn't the people on the bottom fall off? It makes sense from an observational perspective. But then once we dig into the actual science and we start to understand scientific law, such as the law of gravity, 
We understand that the Earth doesn't have to be flat. And in fact, now we think it's ridiculous to think that the Earth is flat. Similarly, if you just look at weight on the surface, it seems to make sense intuitively that if you just eat less and exercise more, you'll lose weight. It's intuitive. And in fact, there's very popular shows on television that seem to support that mythology. But once you start to understand science, especially modern science versus the theories of 50 years ago, mm. you start to see that the body is, a, as you've said, it's a, it's a dynamic system, and it doesn't want to starve to death. And if you start to try to starve it, it's going to counteract your or compensate. So, exactly. So instead of trying to fight your body through starvation, which is horribly unhealthy, instead we need to facilitate your body to heal itself, as you talk about so well on your show. Now, what about density? What about nutritional density as opposed to just calories? Where does that fit in? It's hugely important. Calories in and of themselves are agnostic. They're not good or bad. If I were to say, here's 200 calories, is that good or bad? Uh, I mean, all things being equal, it's good because if you ate no calories, you would die of starvation. But we have to look deeper. We have to say what comes along with those calories. This is the fundamental problem with the calorie mythology is it literally it ignores everything else, everything else. In the calorie mythology, popular food manufacturers will have billboards saying that their soda isn't bad for you because uh, it only contains 140 right. calories. So Twinkies say like but, 20 calories or 30 calories. That's good food based on, on this calorie counting concept. Exactly. But we all know, especially from a pharmacological perspective, that calories, I mean, for example, heroin doesn't have any calories in it. That doesn't mean it's good for you. <laughs> well, you lose weight on it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> And so, no, I, I understand your, your point is well taken, but you know what, Jonathan, why don't we talk about what exactly a calorie is and how that, how, once you define what a calorie is, talk about how the body processes that calorie. The calorie is just a measure of, of energy. So certainly if you, if you over fuel your body. If you consistently eat 10,000 calories of butter per day, you will gain fat. The good news is that nobody does that and no one will do that. And it's analogous to saying if you pour a, a kiddie pool versus, uh, full of water into your sink, will your sink overflow? Yes, it will. The good news is that no one pours an entire kiddie pool mm. full of water into their sink. If you put water in a sink, it might rise temporarily, but it'll fall automatically. So calories are like water to our metabolic sink. They're something we need. They're what we are meant to eat. They're fuel for us. They're like gasoline for our car's fuel tank. But they're just a measure of the quantity of energy. That's it. They're a measure of one thing that you put into your body. There are hundreds of thousands of other things that come in along with those calories. But if all you think about is calories, you will ignore all of them and you will end up in the big fat obesity and diabetes epidemic that we have today. Do we have a shutoff point for calories? I and mean, will the body, can the body read calories and then shut off appetite based on just the amount of calories that are coming in? Or is, or is the satiety or satisfaction centers, are they keyed more into nutrition or, or nutrients? It's both. So, and this is what we dig into in detail in, in the Calorie Myth book, which is that you have this portion of your brain, it called your hypothalamus, which is designed to maintain balance within your body. I mean, isn't it interesting that none of us count vitamin C in and vitamin C out, hmm. yet we don't get diseases right. from a deficiency in vitamin C as long as we eat normal food? I mean, isn't it amazing that our blood sugar seems to regulate yeah. itself, as does our blood pressure and our breathing and, and our water hydration too. levels? Yeah, water. Exactly. Isn't it amazing that if you drink more, you just go to the bathroom more? You don't have to right. think about it. It just happens. <laughs> so, so what happens with calories? How, how come with calories? How come there's not an automatic shutoff point with calories? That seems to be the one food, so, so one aspect of food that's not controlled by satiety centers. There, so there, there absolutely is. There is absolutely an automatic shutoff mechanism. The best way to prove this is to, with, with humans, there is a lot of emotional aspects involved in eating. So when researchers really want to look at this objectively and scientifically, they look at animal models. So if you look at like a rat, for example, a rat doesn't emotionally eat. But its brain is quite similar to us from a genetic level. Hang, hang tight. We got to take a break. We got to take a break, Don. But I want uh, do do animals eat more when they're under stress? And, and don't answer now. I want to get that. I want to address that when we come back to our break. Come back from our break. We're talking to Jonathan Baylor, author of The Calorie Myth, as well as The Smarter Science of Slim. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. You 
have all seen and heard about the elements of the periodic table. These elements are the building blocks of everything in the universe. You, my friends, are made from these elements. A shortage of any of these important trace elements can lead to disease. Go with the science and take the Lady Talk Health Challenge and get all 90 essential trace elements with a healthy start pack at LadyTalkLive.com or call 855-333-LADY. That's 855-333-5239. Research shows it's not just what you put in your body that counts, it's what you put on it as well. Why not use an all-natural, healthy, mineral-based makeup that actually benefits your skin? Once you experience the airiness and flawless coverage of Longevity Mineral Makeup, you will never use anything else. With Longevity, the perception of your complexion will be natural perfection. Animal-friendly mineral makeup at Mary Lou Health. That's M-A-R-I-L-U-Health.com. Or call 855-321-HEALTH. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey Light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1 877 886 3653. That's 1 877 886 3653. Or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Now you can get the same survival food U.S. Special Forces use on their toughest field missions. High-protein, high-energy, freeze-dried foods known as long-range patrol rations or LERPs. Soldiers love LERP rations. They're lightweight and easy to carry. Easy to prepare by just adding water. Easy to enjoy because they taste great. Civilians love LERPs as a solution for emergency preparedness and recreational activities with limited storage space, such as hiking, climbing, sailing, or RV travel. Veteran-owned Freeze-Dry Guy is your exclusive source for this 2013 U.S. military overrun. Long on nutrition, these delicious entrees have a long shelf life, lasting decades. But this rare opportunity, this limited supply, will not last long. You have to act now. Call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD. Or log on now to freezedryguy.com, freezedryguy.com. Free from the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. GCN. We are back on the bright side talking to Jonathan Baylor, author of The Calorie Myth, as well as, as well as The Smarter Science of Slim. Jonathan's website is caloriemythbook.com. Do you have another website, Jonathan? I do, the smarter science of slim.com, but stick with caloriemythbook.com. It's going to be a best resource. Caloriemythbook.com. Tons of YouTube videos I noticed up. Uh, you got a lot of uh, YouTube videos up as well, a lot of radio interviews, lots of good information. Jonathan, before we went to break, you were talking about this whole emotional aspect of eating. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, I would like you to continue, but then I will maybe talk a little bit about the idea that animals eat emotionally as well. 
the, the key thing to keep in mind is there is an automatic shutoff point. It's where we left off. In fact, in animal models, it was impossible for researchers to make animals gain weight. 